On this Winans Wednesday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, Jacob Winans is here to discuss the Florida Panthers' 5-2 to two win over the Washington Capitals, Sergei Bobrovsky's wonderful performance going 40 of 42, and we also discuss how we feel overall about this win, despite the Florida Panthers having multiple two-goal deficits. We discuss this and more on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Wednesday, November 16th, excuse me, edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first system of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And don't forget to also subscribe to all the shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL Locked On Fantasy Hockey, and the newest show on the Locked On Podcast Network, Locked On NHL Prospects. So, Cats fans, the Florida Panthers defeat the Washington Capitals in their third game of this five-game homestand, which their third game of their next eight is at FLA Live Arena. So a big opportunity for the Florida Panthers once again to Create some wins. Coming into this game, the Florida Panthers were 4-1-1 one, and one on home ice and took care of the job uh, on Tuesday night against Washington. Uh, multiple two-goal deficits for the Cats, but still was not easy as the Florida Panthers and the Washington Capitals in each of the, the three periods tonight, every single period looked different. Florida was dominating 5-on-5. Five five. The second period had a very... Uh, where the Florida Panthers were just committing penalty after penalty, giving the Washington Capitals so much uh, time in the offensive zone where it flipped in the in the second period. And then, of course, the, the Panthers just unable to get the puck out of their own zone, and that's where the Washington Capitals were really dominating possession, getting the, the score up to a one-goal deficit for the Capitals before the Florida Panthers eventually pulled away uh, in, in the last few minutes of the – of the third period to make this a 5-2 win for the Cats on on home ice the the box score the box score and the final score say 5 to 2 but this was definitely a closer game than that final score definitely indicated but Sergey Bobrovsky was the star of the night going 40 of 42 in this one for the Cats after not playing for over a week but it's a Winans Wednesday edition of the show so that means Jacob Winans is back for this edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast and Jacob Welcome back, and it's great to be celebrating a, a win for this Cats team. Finally, it seems like we've had a lot of bad luck on our Tuesday nights when we record for a Wednesday. Uh, it's good to get a win. Um, we felt like this was going to be a hotly contested matchup, given that it is their first time playing the Caps since knocking them out of the last year's playoffs. Um, it was an exciting game. Uh, and, and, you know, we were talking about it pre-recording. Uh, definitely not afraid to say it. We got lucky this one. Um, now, the Panthers were definitely due for a lucky break. Uh, they've had a lot of games that they dominated and probably deserved to win, but didn't come away with two points. And tonight it was kind of the opposite. Uh, the Panthers gave them chance after chance to get in, to get back in the game. Uh, the third period, uh, honestly, one of the worst periods the Panthers have played uh, this entire season, just getting completely caved in in their own uh, in their own zone, uh, almost no possession time, but timely goals. Um, that's what good teams do. When you're not playing well, you, you weather the storm and you find a timely goal. We got fantastic goaltending. And the Panthers got two points that they didn't necessarily deserve, but uh, win, wins are wins. That's two points in the bank. Uh, much needed two points against uh, a team that the, the Panthers want to have success against uh, dating back to last year. And um, not, not a whole lot you can say other than uh, that Bob was fantastic tonight. And uh, Carter Verhage remains a cap killer. Uh, another two goal game, and yeah, as a, if you're a Caps fan, uh, you're seeing that you're seeing Carter Verhage number twenty three in your nightmares because this dude is just dating back to last season has just dominated them. Yeah, and 12, 12 points in in six games in the postseason last year. 
getting two goals tonight and just just going by just like we like I said at the top of the show about period by period for for the for the Panthers and Caps how every single uh period looked different and I mean e- even with even before Carver Hagee and Alexander Barkov got on the scoreboard I mean like Carver Hagee was just skating by uh John Carlson and had a beautiful backhand very early Alexander Barkov on the penalty kill especially in the second period was the outside of Sergei Bobrovsky was the was just incredible just getting a position in front of the net to be able to clear the puck I mean and then you look at the ultimate penalty killer really for for the Florida Panthers in Sergei Bobrovsky I mean 10 total minutes of the Florida Panthers just being down a man in in this one I mean the the pairing of Mahura and Gudis didn't have their best nights as far as as far as being in position and both of them going to the box quite often, but the but the but Sergey Barovsky uh, of his forty two shots uh, taken, fourteen of them uh, came while being down down a man. I mean, of course, that's increased ice um, offensive zone time for the Capitals there. I mean, after period one, the Caps had six six minutes of offensive zone time to the Panthers nine, and then by the time the second period ended, uh, due to all the penalties and time in the offensive zone, uh, Cap Washington was leading sixteen minutes to fifteen in the Panthers uh, zone as well. So it just goes to show how critical those uh, penalties were for the Panthers in in helping Washington get back in this one. Yeah, I mean, you're playing with fire anytime you let that Washington power play get that kind of ice time. Um, now, obviously, this is a different Washington team than what we're used to, uh, given that Nick Backstrom is not in the lineup. Uh, he's a huge part of their power play and has been for as long as I've been watching hockey, honestly. He, he's been there so long. He's such, such a critical part of what they do. But still, when you have, a honestly, the most talented goal scorer in the history of the sport uh, who specializes in the power play, and you give them five chances. It's honestly, it, it's a, it's a minor miracle. The fact that Ovechkin didn't score a power play goal in this one uh, and, and, and really kill us and punish us for giving them that many chances. Uh, and all like all the credit almost go, it has to go to Sergei Bobrovsky for, for the penalty kill, because if all the killers did their job, uh, blocked some shots, got some, some key clears. The best penalty killer on the team was without a doubt, Sergei Bobrovsky. He made some huge timely saves and the biggest part of, of his uh some of these saves is that he either didn't give up a rebound at all and he killed the play or if he if there was a rebound he directed it to an area of, of low danger and gave and gave his his penalty killers a chance to clear the to clear the zone uh, and that's huge if you can't if you can't smother the play entirely directing that rebound somewhere where it's not as dangerous give your guys a chance to recover that's something that veteran goaltenders do uh but Brodsky has definitely over the years, developed that he's got a good handle on that, uh, especially uh, saves down low uh, with with his legs. He he tends to kick them out to the sides, or if he's got uh, it comes in from the blocker, he'll block it up high so it flutters in the air and out of, out of the way. Those are those are intentional, and I think he did a really good job of doing that on the penalty on the penalty kill today. Yeah, and and even even there was a point where I was seeing uh, I I believe the Washington Capitals were trying to get their power play too, you know, on the on the ice as well. And I uh, and they were trying to get the puck, dump it into the zone from the red line to get their change. And Sergey Bobrovsky was also right there to just stop it in the trapezoid and just to clear the puck again to prevent more um, more offensive offensive zone time for the Capitals as well. So just uh, just being able to quickly skate behind it as well as 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 to not give uh, Washington more uh, shots on goal on the power play than they already had. So 14 is a lot in, in, in 10 minutes, 10 minutes of play. But one thing we did see for, for the Panthers uh, as well is that Alexander Barkov got his uh, first goal at five on five uh, mm-hmm. th- uh, this season. I mean, a goal that if you're Washington and you're Darcy Kemper, you you definitely want that back as he beats uh, Darcy Kemper short side just under the glove and gets it uh, passed. But that and of course uh, Sam Reinhart getting getting a baseball swing type of uh, goal to hit it right into the net as well on the power play, which now it's st- four straight games for the Panthers uh, as far as far as far as uh, as far as that. So four straight games with a power play goal. So safe to say that the power that special teams is coming together for the Cats. Yeah, the power play is definitely waking up. Um, now the penalty kill going five, five for five tonight. 
uh, that's huge. The penalty kill has, has started to put it together a little bit. Uh, I got to get a little better in the face off dot, uh, get early clears, but that's a, it's a minor detail, um, that, that can get cleaned up. It's fundamental. Uh, now the power play is starting to wake up and right, right on time, especially as Ekblad re-enters the lineup, he got an assist on that Sam Reinhardt goal. Um, it was a primary assist off of a, off of a, a wrist shot that he took. And we know Aaron Ekblad does not hesitate to get the puck to the net. And if he's getting pucks to the net, that is, that means great things for Sam Reinhardt. Sam Reinhardt lives in that area right in front of the crease, uh, tipping pucks and deflecting pucks, and especially on the power play. That's where he did so much of his damage last season. So with Ekblad back in the lineup, uh, back on that power play, it's it's a, a really good, really good uh, situation to be in if you're Sam Reinhardt and, and trying to get your game going. Uh, his goal is pretty incredible. Um, the hand-eye coordination to be able to bat that puck in. And if you watch that goal, he flipped his stick uh, upside down and back. So he, he ends up hitting the puck, not backhand, but backwards and kind of on his forehand. It, it is a really wacky goal. It takes a, a ridiculous amount of skill and, and hand-eye coordination to be able to do that and keep it under the crossbar. Um, I, I thought that was pretty incredible, his, his goal. It's probably not going to get an, as much attention as it should, uh, given the, the, the degree of difficulty. But uh, anyway, Sam Reinhardt can get find the, the back of the net. We're, we're taking it this year after his uh, really unlucky start to the season. And Barkov, that is, his goal is, is just a lesson that he needs to take with him the entire rest of the season. And he, he has such a good wrist shot just shoot the puck. He doesn't have to find the perfect shot. He doesn't have to try to pick a corner. His, his shot comes off with so much snap and velocity that he can beat goalies one-on-one -on -one straight through them. And you saw that against Darcy Kemper, who is a Stanley Cup winning goalie. He's, he's a great goaltender. And Barkov just beat him one-on-one -on -one from way outside. And that's not, it's not unheard of for Barkov to score goals like that. So it might look, look, might look lucky, might be a kind of fluky bounce, but, you know, things happen. And when you have a shot at, at, at a talented, uh, a, a talented and dangerous wrist shot like Alexander Barkov has, just got to let it go from anywhere sometimes, and we saw that tonight. Mm, definitely, and we'll discuss more about a Alexander Barkov, including him getting a little animated in this game, uh, something that we don't really see. And of course, the conversation going. We're gonna, of course, circle back to Sergei Bobrovsky in uh, segment number two of this show. But first, we're gonna tell you all about Built Bar. And can we pause this? pod for a second okay we're paused great because you gotta try this and i'm talking about built bars new reimagined flavor cookie dough topper coconut brownie bar coconut brownie topper white chocolate peppermint granola it's built take on granola bar so it's more filling and still insanely tasty and candy cane brownie puff built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud first first off for anyone who hasn't tried built bar before they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. They're revolutionizing nutrition, as we know, with its 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories, 130 calories. Just sink your teeth into that first bite, and it'll change your life forever. I'm not kidding. There, there'll be a time before you try these new built flavors and the magical, wonderful time afterwards. You're probably wondering which new flavors are my favorite. That unanswerable question, to say the least. They're all unbelievable. They're all different. So you can order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Built, you got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now by using cr promo code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Once again, that is promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off at Built.com. Second segment on this Winans Wednesday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Got Jacob Winans here for another edition of the show. And Jacob, uh, a little bit of an animated Alexander Barkov that we uh, saw after Carver Hagee, which a little bit of a scare uh, on Tuesday night as Carver Hagee, uh, a little a blind side hit by Lars Eller. Uh, camera angle, saw it two, three times. Don't think it was an intentional hit to the head or anything super egregious that Ar Lars Eller was was trying to commit on uh, Carver Hagee. It wasn't. I don't compare that anywhere to Luke Cunnan's hit on Patrick Hornquist last week. Uh, but of course, a blindside hit, not time to react, which uh, which got the penalty. So uh, the penalty being, I thought it was a. I thought it was very appropriate. 
not not a uh, not a five minute major. Uh, get, gets right back up, leaves the bench for a little bit. Nick Cousins, uh, Nick Cousins comes in for his shift uh, for for a few minutes, comes back. Uh, but of course, Carter Hagee's fine. Of course, the two goals that he got uh, uh, to steal the game, which he's now in double digits. But uh, an uh, an animated Alexander Barkov, which uh, we we barely see. So. A little bit of a, a, a something you'd like to see out of your captain after uh, his, his buddy, who's really uh, helped him out a lot in these last uh, two, two, three years. So a little bit of a nice fire to see out of Alexander Barkov there. Yeah, it's not something we see often with Barkov. He's he's such a mild mannered guy. He's he's pretty laid back. He's kind of quiet on and off the ice. But for him to come out with that kind of uh, response when Verhage gets hit. Uh, really speaks to the camaraderie of that line and, and of the team as a whole. And as a player on the team, when you see your captain in, in Barkov, a guy who really doesn't get involved in any of those extracurricular uh, after the whistle scrums, really, it's rare to see him involved in that. When you see Barkov react that way, it, there's no possible way the team is not fired up by that. Uh, it's inspiring to see your captain get involved in, in that kind of way. And uh, to address the hit, I don't think it's anything dirty from Lars Eller. Um, I think, yeah, like you said, the penalty is appropriate. I think maybe in the playoffs it goes uncalled. But in regular season, uh, especially, that just there's really no reason for that hit. Um, I mean, you can easily play the puck. You know Verhage's got his head down. The puck is on the board. You can easily just play the puck. There's no reason to take the body, especially up high. So I felt like it was, a, I would say, dangerous. I, I wouldn't necessarily call it predatory, but it's, it's a situation where Lars Eller is a veteran. He knows what, he's, he knows what he's doing. Um, He's not trying to injure anybody, but he is trying to set a tone and catch a guy who's got his head down. Uh, so I think the penalty was appropriate. I'm glad the, the Panthers were able to um, respond in the way they did after that hit. Um, and, and obviously, Verhage went through the protocol. Uh, good on the NHL for making sure he was all good. Um, one of the cases where the protocol worked the way it should have. Um, obviously, as South Florida fans, uh, we, we've seen how concussion protocol can uh, – not go the way it's supposed to um word to two attack by loa and teddy bridgewater but um with with verhage everything was handled properly it was good to see him get back in and and, and score two goals to ice the game but uh I, I love the response from barkov i really did uh that that's such a key part of the team verhage is he's an engine to that line and to the entire team and i, I love the response it was pretty crazy seeing barkov get into into that scrap and then he comes up with no helmet on it's like is this is this Barkov? Like, <laughs> never seen him like this. It was it was pretty cool. I liked it. It's like, who is this guy? I I don't recognize yeah. I don't I don't recognize the, this guy. And like we mentioned, uh, Nick Nick Cousins take a takes a few shifts on on his on his line uh, for a little bit while uh, Verhage is going through the protocol. And uh, Nick Cousins uh, getting on the on the scoreboard and his uh, song uh, being "Rich Fix" uh, from Drake and Twenty One Savage as uh, as his goal song. And of course. We were discussing all of last week about of of the possibility of Nick Cousins being the guy who could be placed on waivers for the Panthers, and look at him um, makes a case uh, even even before uh, the Panthers eventually placed Rudolph Balsers on uh, waivers, and him eventually getting claimed by Tampa Bay. And second straight game that uh, not second straight games is uh, second in the last uh, three games uh, that Nick Cousins gets a. Goal and creating that creating that uh, goal on on the forecheck and then and and then uh, Forsling just a beautiful beautiful feed in and then of course uh, the amount of time that Nick Cousins had to skate around the uh, blue paint to get it past Kemper like just nothing he could he could do uh, there just uh, just uh, if you're if you're that Washington defense I mean especially I mean l- look at where in that period that goal came at, at the 702 mark of the uh, of the third period we were talking about especially early on with the with the panthers as they were just stupid pinned in their own zone losing faceoffs at that point like past the four minute mark there it was like 61 percent to 39 in favor of washington eventually it was 55 45 by the end of the game so the panthers were starting to get their faceoff wins i mean we saw both the stall brothers on the ice it, as well there uh, when they were unable to clear the puck Sam Bennett even though Sam Bennett had a great first two periods as he was circling around the zone and not not losing the puck uh, as well even though not generating a shot on goal that's your third line set that's your third line center even though 
he's playing like a, a top six uh, forward. But still, that s- goal at 7.02, go- going back to Nick Cousins, is just throughout this fan base, I could only imagine the amount of exhale all of us felt because there was that opportunity for the pan- for the Capitals to really tie this game, to tie this game, even though the first period there was a lot of p- um, possession for the Panthers. And the Panthers weathered the storm on the on the PK, even though they g- did give up a goal on a delayed penalty. But that doesn't count towards your uh, your special team. So, a big exhale on that one by Nick Cousins. Yeah, that that goal from Cousins was huge, and like I said, the, uh, kind of at the top was timely goals are very important. And Nick Cousins got a really timely one there, where things were not going the Panthers' way. It seemed like it was inevitable that we were going to get have this game tied up. Uh, the Panthers really were kind of desperate for any kind of positive momentum. And, you know, in a situation like that, we're not even necessarily looking for a goal. We're looking for a good shift or some zone time or uh, a power play or anything. But Nick Cousins goes all the way uh, to like the ultimate turnaround and gives us a, a nice goal. And it's uh, pretty crazy. how the Hockey is such a weird sport. Uh, sometimes it's just the, the way it goes. It, it's so, so much is unpredictable about it. And with Nick Cousins, it's, it's kind of funny. His first two goals as a Panther, almost identical. I mean, <laughs> right there in the, in the crease, does the exact same move to get around the goalie's outstretched leg. He, for whatever reason, both times had all all day to get the shot off. Um, I, I, if you asked him, he'd probably get the same kind of answer that he, he's never he's never had two goals in, like in a row like that where they're completely identical all day to 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 shoot it and able to cash in on the same move. But the fact that he's gotten that twice in a, in what, a, a week span, <laughs> two two out of the last three games, he's been able to do that. It's uh, funny how that works out sometimes. But I, I thought his, his goal was great. And uh, it did come with uh, in the middle of a line change. So he was on the ice with, with Barkov and Kachuk at that time. Um, kind of gave him a little reward there for, for filling in when Verhege was getting checked out. He ends up with an extended shift with Barkov and Kachuk at the end, uh, catches in a goal off of it. I thought it was awesome. And um, Gustav Forsling, the pass was just ridiculous. I mean, that that's that's elite vision from Forsling. And to put that puck right on his tape could not have been played any better. Uh, that was that was a huge goal. Absolutely huge. Yeah, and just a lot of great individual performances for, for the Panthers. I mean, Matthew Kachuk gets uh, three points for, for the Panthers. Uh, Verhage getting those two. Barkov getting three points in this one. And just... Uh, continuing to just create good habits and, uh, of course, a different type of game for the Panthers. We've spoken a lot about eliminating rush chances for, for the Panthers, being responsible in their own zone. But the, but the, one, the, one, uh, the, the one time that you need your goaltender to really, to really uh, make, make, make saves on a, on, a, on a game that you don't perform like you have in the first 15, uh, that, it, like you said, hockey is a strange sport, and that and that uh, that that game from Sergei Bobrovsky was definitely uh, a performance that was just really, really uh, much needed for this team because you 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 see any of the chances that Sergei Bobrovsky had it in limited uh, chances in the first uh, first uh, few weeks of the season slash month. Um, don't know if the Panthers come out on top in this one, that's for sure. But we'll actually uh, d- discuss that more in the third and final segment here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers, where we'll be discussing continuing the state of the goaltending and, of course, the scores around uh, the NHL on Tuesday night. We're going to discuss that next here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Winans Wednesday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. I've got Jacob Winans here for another edition of the show. So, yeah, uh, a nine-game Tuesday night for the NHL as right now the Predators are leading the Wild with 244 left in the third. Uh, Detroit's up one nothing on the Ducks um, with 530 left in the first. Uh, 
it's nil nil between the Golden Knights and Sharks uh, in the first period. Uh, Tampa Bay comes out on top against the Dallas Stars, which is the Florida Panthers' next opponent in overtime by a final score of five to four. The New Jersey Devils, 10 games in a row now that the New Jersey Devils have won. What a season and what a start for the New Jersey Devils. Five to one over Montreal. Uh, Toronto defeats Pittsburgh five to two. Vancouver uh, defeats Buffalo five to four. So uh, Buffalo has come down to earth a little bit after their uh, fast start. And uh, Columbus, uh, who's dealing with so many, so many, so many injuries. Uh, I believe Elvis Merck's Leakins uh, left uh, this game uh, tonight for the Columbus Blue Jackets. So uh, Zach Wierenski is out for the season. Patrick Lane is going to be out for a while. So bad injury luck right now for the Columbus Blue Jackets as the Florida Panthers will actually be facing them in less than a week, actually. Um, so, Jacob, uh, let's talk about a little bit of the state of the goaltending for the Panthers because, uh, like we mentioned, Sergey Borowski felt um, got 14 shots faced against him on the power play for Washington um, for the Washington Capitals tonight. Uh, goes over a week without starting. Of course, his last start prior to this one was against the LA Kings on the road, and a little bit of progress for the for the. Spencer Knight in in his last three starts gets a win against Anaheim, uh, a dominant performance, a shutout against the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, even though the Florida Panthers, you look at Saturday's game against the Edmonton Oilers, give, gives up a, pr- a pretty bad goal against Tyson Berry. Uh, let, let's call it for what it is on that second one. But still, a, a if you look at wins of what should have happened, of course, I, I believe that the Panthers uh, should have very well won that game against Edmonton. Uh, but still, uh, an unusual game for the Panthers as far as what we've seen in the first 15. Um, facing a lot of shots, and Sergey Borowski stands up very tall in this one. And w- l- let's talk about the state of the goaltending. I-, I think for the Panthers, man, if if you give Bob this much rest and then he comes out and performs like this, man, what a good problem for the Florida Panthers to have. Yeah, I mean, big picture, goaltending for the Panthers has just been a massive strength the past couple of years, um, with the, the outlier being the, the series against the Lightning uh, two two playoffs ago, where, I mean, no one's competing with that Lightning team, $17 million over the cap, and just <laughs> offensive talent all over the place. That, Fair. We got blitzed in that one, and, and it is what it is. But for the most part, aside from that outlier, the Panthers' goaltending has just been stellar the last couple of years uh, with the, the goaltending excellence department, and, and now we're uh, starting to really see the, the benefits and the results of that. Uh, Spencer Knight's development has come along really, really nicely. He's off to a great start this year. Uh, now, and Bob, uh, he's he's not a guy who's going to just get pushed out of the crease either. He's still a $10 million goalie. He's he's a veteran. He's two-time Vesna winner. He, he knows how to play and perform. And what a professional, I mean, to, to sit out, understanding you know spencer knight's hot right now he's riding a, a really good streak we're not going to mess with it we're going to let him let him play his game it takes a, a a really solid professional uh with very little ego to take a step back and sit and and let that let that ride out so you have to give bob credit for that and then to take that a step further to come into a game like tonight and play the way he did uh, after after sitting out for that amount of time uh it's a testament to how he prepares and how he keeps himself ready and, you know, it, you're coming in off of over a week of not playing. You're coming in ice cold. And then to have the, that amount of quality chances and power play opportunities right in your face and to, to meet that challenge, that, that speaks volumes about Bob as a player and, and as, a, as a professional. So I thought tonight's performance for him was one of his, definitely one of his best uh, since he's been a Florida Panther these last few years. That's, that's in the top, the top handful of, of games he's played as a cat. Um, I, I, I thought he was incredible tonight. Uh, and yeah, can't, can't really say, can't really say enough good things about the, the Panthers goaltending right now. It's, it's a good problem to have. Uh, the only thing we hope for is consistency and health, uh, keep those two guys healthy. Uh, hopefully they, they stay consistent and can find a really good rhythm, uh, bouncing off of each other. Uh, so no one has to get overworked. Uh, no one has to stay cold. Everyone, everyone's playing, everyone's contributing, everyone's winning. And the the Panthers goaltending situation is pretty good right now. And while we're on the topic uh, topic of goaltending, uh, have to mention that the goaltending in the minor league has been very very solid to start the year. So if 
if there's ever a necessity where goalies have to be brought up, we have to feel very good about what we have uh, behind Bob and and Spencer Knight as well with uh, Alex Lyon, who's a really good, really good player, Uh, kind of a fringe NHL backup, but he's, he's excellent at the AHL level. And then Matt Guzda, who started the year uh, just fantastic in his first professional hockey. So really, really good big picture view of what the the Panthers have between the pipes and it's looking, it's looking very good right now. So that's a, a really good problem to have. And, definitely an asset the Panthers are are going to reap the benefits of as we get further into the season. Yeah, and going into this game, uh, Sergey Borowski, just let's look at just uh, save percentage and uh, GAA for him, 897, uh, 897 uh, save percentage and a 329 goals against average for uh, Bob. And and th- that's that's what the amount of goals that's, been really given up on limited chances as the Panthers just find themselves in the top five of, of least amount of shots against. And just uh, a few times during, during, during just mini stretches, we, we've talked a little bit about mini stretches for the Panthers uh, uh, where they would go like a minute, minute and a half of just giving up two goals. And sometimes that would be the difference in the game out, out of 60 minutes. But uh, we, we spoke about the 60 minute performance for, for the cats, uh, just total domination there's still parts of this game as, as far as the, as far as the, that needs cleaning up. Of course, we, we spoke about earlier about um, being unable to clear the zone for, for, for the Panthers really early on in the third period and being in better position. So you're not going to the box so often uh, for the cats. I mean, just uh, we talked about this pre-recording. I mean, Corsi four percentage um, at five on five, just in the third period alone, um, th- 34 to uh, 14 in 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 favor uh excuse me 34 to 13 excuse me in favor of washington and that usually usually cores four five five, uh, five on five favors the panthers and this is a, a rare one where just one period skews that in the completely different direction for for washington and panthers weathered the storm the the guy really for the washington capitals that was that was really on it mostly was john carlson for getting seven shots on goal on the delayed penalty, he gets he gets one through. But even on the power play, I mean, I, the when Alexander Ovechkin just was waiting on the top of the circle, the Panthers did a really good job not allowing uh, him to get that one timer blast from that spot. We've seen it his whole career. He's gonna break the record uh, he for for goals all time. It's gonna be it's gonna take at least another season or two for that to happen, but. The, the Panthers, you've got to give credit to them for not allowing uh, Alexander Ovechkin to really uh, get that one-timer shot from the left side. Yeah, it, they, they really didn't allow it. Um, coaching, you have to give some credit to coaching for, for scheming the penalty kill to not allow that. But it even got to a point where the, the Capitals were uh, moving Ovi to a spot outside of his office. Um, we saw at least at least one or two power plays where he spent the majority of the power play playing in the bumper position in the slot, mm-hmm. which is not a place that he, he typically plays. Um, so that really shows that the capitals were like, we have to try something different. They, they figured us out. That's not a situation that, that you see the capitals power play in very often. So um, I, I, I was really impressed with uh, especially coaching schematically being able to game plan around with the, the capitals uh, brought on their, on their power play. And it's, it's it's really a decades old strategy that what the Capitals do. It's their entire power play is designed to feed Ovechkin on that left side at the top of the circle, and the Panthers took it away tonight, uh, forced the Capitals to make some adjustments, and as a result, it kept Ovechkin off the score sheet um, with with that uh, wicked one timer. So, yeah, definitely definitely a successful night on the penalty kill, and hopefully something they can build off of because special teams have not been a strength, and they're finally starting to come to life on both ends uh, and, and it, it really works that way sometimes where when one starts to start clicking the other starts start to um, start firing at all cylinders and it's uh, they, they kind of go hand in hand a lot of the time so it's it's an encouraging win especially from the special team standpoint and from the goaltending standpoint it's, it's something to build on even though it was not the cleanest game uh, special teams really uh, came up big for the Panthers in this one where in Previous games, they dominated everything but special teams, and it cost them. Uh, it's nice to see it turned around. Mm. Yeah, one power play goal given up in the last uh, four games uh, for for the Panthers. Just a overall, uh, just 
a changing of the tides for uh, this season from what it looks like, at least in this stretch. And uh, what was the problem for the Panthers? Uh, maybe maybe the averages as far as NHL ranks will start to see the Panthers climb a little bit. I mean, let's not forget last year around December, the Panthers were near the bottom in uh, power play percentage and then ended up in the top five. So still plenty of time to build the good habits as well. Of course, Aaron Eckblad being back has a lot to do with how their power play is going to perform, even though as far as points wise, Aaron Eckblad hasn't really, uh, he got his, well, he got his first uh, assist of the season. So, so, but as far as getting goals, it's, they're going to eventually come for him as, as he gets accumulated. And of course, Barkoff with, and Rhino with their slow starts starting to get it. So a little bit of uh, it coming together for the Panthers. And, and of course, uh, Third, third game of this five-game homestand, seven of their um, next eight, of course, at, at home. So a big, big, big opportunity for the Panthers. Uh, Paul Maurice even spoke about, really, about liking the schedule, about how this, uh, how, this, uh, how this comes out after them coming back from out west. So just an overall uh, kind of a good situation as, as this is going to be – we're almost near the first benchmark of the season, which – in NHL, uh, in a NHL circles, we call American Thanksgiving as that first benchmark. So now we're starting to see where the Panthers really are starting to fit in in that first benchmark of the NHL season, which now 16 games in, 9-6-1, and one, third in the division. Uh, so not a bad place to be. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty content. Yeah, I can't complain. Uh, we, we talked about it over the offseason. It, it wasn't going to be the same red-hot start we had last year. Um this year, it seems like the New Jersey Devils are what we were last year. They they just they're exciting. They're young, offensive offensively. They're dominating. That's what we were doing last year. This year, we're we're taking the approach of all the other teams that have been contending for years, like Tampa and Boston. Uh, Boston's in the league with their own right now, but uh, Tampa and and some of these other teams that are usually in the playoffs, uh, they don't always come out just setting the world on fire in the first month. You just win games, get yourself comfortably in a nice playoff spot, and, and it's a marathon. And the Panthers are doing that. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to be as easy to start the year with a new coaching staff and a lot of new faces, but they're they're finding ways to get two points. They have not played their best hockey by any means. Uh, they've dealt with a lot of injuries so far. Uh, they, they've weathered a, a, a ton of storms to begin the season, uh, and, and their best hockey is still in front of them, and that's a good thing to, 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 to have when – they're already above 500, already in a playoff spot with a lot of with a lot of poor hockey in the rearview mirror. Their their best hockey is in front of them, so it's it's exciting. And and as we talk about those uh, those special teams averages uh, going going up, and hopefully the power play uh, finds another gear. There is there is a, a really key part of that Panthers power play expected to make his return to the lineup in the next uh, month to month and a half kind of range where we're obviously talking about Anthony Duclair, who was a massive part of that top power play unit last year. He's definitely expected back at some point in the next uh, several weeks. So that, that could be a, a game changer for them offensively and on the power play. It's, as long as they can stay healthy and, and keep plugging away and, and, and building on, on nights like this, I, I think we're in a good spot. I, I really have no complaints about where we are right now in the standings. Mm. I don't even want to. I don't even want to think about the roster moves that Bill Zito would have to make in order to just bring bring him back. Uh, so that definitely going to be a hard uh, part of the season once that time does come. But definitely would be a help for the Florida Panthers as they uh, hopefully try to get full strength uh, for the playoffs. But of course, uh, sixty six games still left, and of course the Panthers pace, pace, pace. And that's uh, wh where the where the Panthers find themselves in, and still in a in a great position in the Atlantic. Uh, Nineteen points in sixteen games, can't complain. But Jacob, I want to thank you once again for joining me on this Wine and Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Uh, tell everybody out there where they can find you online. Absolutely, you can find me online on Twitter at Jacob Wines Eight. I tend to be pretty active during Panthers games and in between, um, so definitely give me a follow there. Awesome, Jacob, and see, I will see you next week. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to so be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to subscribe to the shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, 
Locked On Fantasy Hockey, and the newest show on the Locked On NHL Network, Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure to listen to today's episode of Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today is a 20-minute podcast that brings exclusive interviews from all the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network on everything going on in the entirety of the sports scene with the take of the day as well. So follow the Locked On Sports Today podcast on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. So I'm Armando Velez with Jacob Winans. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.